Hey friends, what's going on? David Potts here with Song Notes and a quick technique video I want to show you today. So this one is going to be called basically uh, silencing the strings on the two count. Here is the sort of chord sheet I made for this one. And this is going to be uh, inspired by, you know, a while back I made this lesson for Stand By Me, the classic from Ben E. King, 1961. In that video, there's a technique going on where we're going to sort of use our right hand on the two count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and to silence the strings. I want to go back to just that technique and I also want to show you how the same technique is used on the song My Girl by The Temptations from 1964. A very similar thing, right? So it's also on the two count. One and two and and four and one and two and three and four and so in this new diagram I made I'm going to show you both those exercises and just really drill down into this specific technique because whether you're playing it for these songs or other songs it's a helpful little one to know and it's a great way just to add some spice you know through through some right hand percussion right to spice things up because you're playing solo acoustic guitar you don't have a full band or you know a maraca shaker right next to you to sort of give you those percussive uh, bits of flavor that can add a lot to music. So I'm going to show you how to do it with your right hand. So as always, you can get this uh, PDF through my website, uh, and uh, it'll be a great little aid for you to to sort of use after you watch this video. But let's get on into it really quick, right? So again, two exercises I'm going to show you. But first, I want to talk about this main idea of what we're going to do. So first up, there's this idea of just play the notes that you need to play, right? So for my for uh, my girl, you know, it's dumb. And I'll show you this tab in a second, right? These are the notes I'm going to have to play. But what I'm missing here is the percussive aspect. So that's where step two comes in, which is on certain counts, and in this exercise, it's always going to be on the two count. You're going to silence the strings by bringing your right hand, the sort of fleshy part of your right hand into the strings as you see in my picture here. And what that does is whether you're playing one string or you're playing a full chord, if you sort of touch all the strings with your hand, you know, the fleshy part of your hand, it's going to kill the sound that the strings are making. And thus it's going to sort of create silence, which is the goal. So basically, again, play the notes as you have to play them and then silence them with your right hand. Now there's two other parts I want to add to this which are important for context. One is when you silence them, you want to bring that part of your hand into the strings, but be mindful of the note you need to play next. And when I say be mindful of it, it means that you want to take either your pick or your index finger or your thumb, whatever you're going to be used to pluck the string, and sort of get that finger ready to pluck the next note. So in the case of my girl, one and two and three and four and, right? I'm sort of one and two, and while I, while I bring it down, my index finger is sort of making its way to that next note, which in this case is the fifth string again. So it's almost as my brain is sort of telling that hand, as you go down, fleshy part of the hand, you kill the strings, but index finger, you start going towards that next note. But that's the main idea, is you want to play the note, silence the note, and then play the next string, okay? And then, of course, you just repeat this whole thing. So you play, the, play your notes, you silence it on a certain count. In this case, it's going to be the two count. And then you immediately go back to playing your next notes, okay? So let's show you what that's going to look like in two different contexts here. So for my girl, the cool part about this little exercise is there's two different uh, sections here. There's the initial intro, which sounds like this. Right? And that sort of happens before part two, which is the... Let's look at those in order. So the first one, basically it's only two different notes. You're going to have our index finger on the third fret of the fifth string and our ring finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, okay? This is like a power chord shape. You might recognize it for that. And all we're going to do note-wise is go from the fourth string to the fifth string and then play the fifth string twice. And we're just going to repeat that. So if you just did the notes, right? And if you had the counting in there, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You can use a pick or you can use your, um, you know, I'm using my index and thumb fingers here. You could use just your index. 
and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So in this case, my left hand is staying totally still. But what's missing, and what I just showed you, is that percussive aspect where we want silence on the two count. We want to silence the third fret note on the two count, right? So that's going to be like this. Right? If I counted it, it would be and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, right? And you can sort of silence it quietly like this. Or you can be a bit more dramatic about it. Okay, I think the quieter one works better in this specific context because you're doing the silencing a bit more often. It's on the two count and on the four count, but um, you know it's, it's up to you how sort of loud you want to be. Let's look at the part two of the exercise here, right? In part two, if you look at the left half, we're just doing the C riff twice in a row. And the idea here is we're going to um, have our index finger on the third fret, just like before, just like it used to be in part one. And then after that note, and we're going to silence the strings, talk about that in a minute, we're going to slide the index finger up to the fifth fret, five, se seven, five, seven, five, right? So it's index ring, index ring, index. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Now first, get used to the notes. Just the notes. Don't worry about the percussion yet. But once you bring in the percussion, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... All right, so that's basically the idea there. Again, learn the notes first and the finger positions, and then bring in the right hand for that extra percussion. And you can do it quietly if you want to. Okay, now if you wanna make this second riff, um, this part two of two here, a bit more difficult, you can do the right side of the tab, which is going to go from the C to the F. So this, this is what's happening during the verse of the song, where we're basically gonna do this thing I just showed you. And then we're gonna to go to the, basically go, do the same pattern, but start on the one fret, the first fret of the sixth string. Then you slide up to third to fifth, third to fifth, third, right? On the sixth, fifth, and fourth string, okay? And then you have to basically then start it over again. And your index finger ends that one on the third fret. So you just go to the, stay on the third fret, go to the fifth string, and go back to the C. So playing the C to the F is more difficult. You have to jump around more, but I'm gonna show you what it sounds like. Here we go. Okay, and if we count it, I'll take it nice and slow, this is difficult. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two. Okay, so there you go. I'll say that about this is that that last part of the exercise is trickier, and you really want to make sure, I was a bit sloppy there in some cases, you want to make sure that your left hand is good doing the notes first, and you can pluck the notes cleanly. Worry about that before you bring in the percussion, okay? And if you just want to do the main riff, that's a good way to start, because it's the same thing over and over again. And it's still a little bit of finger movement with your left hand, but it's only between third and fifth fret. You're never having to go down to the sixth string and to the first fret. That makes it a lot more difficult. So again, learn the notes first, learn, pluck them cleanly first, second, and then bring in the percussion next, okay? So that's the My Girl riff. Now let's look at Stand By Me by Ben E. King uh, from 1961. So the idea here is I'm gonna be showing you this version based in the key of C, which is what my lesson is in as well. This lets you play the full bass line. Which you can't do if you're playing this in the key of A, which is what uh, the original song is in, because your guitar runs out of bass notes, right? So in this case, it's the same idea. It's only going to be on the two count, and we're just going to learn the notes first. So um, we're basically always going to be on the fifth and sixth string. I recommend using your um, ring finger on the third fret of the fifth and sixth string, okay? Um, for the second fret notes on the fifth string, 
I recommend using your middle finger, and on the first fret notes of the sixth string, I recommend using your index finger. Okay? Those are the notes we're going to need, right? First to third fret on the sixth string, and then open to second to third on the fifth string. Okay? So, basically, if we don't worry about the percussion yet, it's going to be one and two and three and four and 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 one and two four and one and two and three and four and one now that sounds fine on its own, but again, to take it to the next level, you want to add that percussion, right? One and two and three and four and 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 one and two four and one and two and three and four and one. And this is a great song if you put on the actual album version of the song. There is a loud percussive, I don't know what the instrument is, but it's happening on that two count. It's like you can't miss it, right? And it's not from the guitar, but if you're playing this by yourself on guitar, this is a great little um, exercise and a great little technique to use on that two count, whether you want to do it quietly or if you want to do it loudly. I just showed you. I hope this is helpful. Again, you can get this PDF at the website playasongnotes.com. It's a great little way to take these exercises with you and just focus on this technique, right? Because this, again, can be useful in all kinds of songs. And uh, I wanted to show it to you. And if you're interested in learning Stand By Me, I have the PDF for that as well at my website. It's lesson 308. And um, I show you how to strum the intro and verse as well. So I'm going to leave you all with that. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful for you. If you have any techniques you want to hear uh, more clarification about through a video lesson, let me know. And I would be uh, happy to keep those in mind when I'm considering what to make next. So I'm going to take off now. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.